Hey everybody, it's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker, and I will be teaching you just a little bit about the basics of MySQL Workbench. I've used this in a couple other videos. The reason I want to create this is because I'm, uh, I'm creating a blog, and it's just so much easier to explain things through video rather than making like 500 pictures. So once you get here, this is the very first page that will come up when you open MySQL Workbench. And MySQL Workbench is an awesome program for database design, not only for MySQL, but if you're working with any relational database management system, you can design this with MySQL Workbench. It's just really good in my opinion. There's a lot of other options out there, but this is the one I like. So we click File, New Model. This will give us a model of our database. So our database name is MyDB. We can right click that, we can edit that, and we can make it something like way cooler, like legit. Yeah. Alright, I'm gonna X out of that. Now, this this whole program is built around this model for the database legit. Uh, when we create a new a new diagram, it's a diagram of this legit database. So when we create two diagrams, for example, now we have this diagram and this diagram. They are both pointing. They're both uh, diagrams for the legit database. So that means when we create a table in the legit database. This table can be used in both of the diagrams. So these diagrams aren't databases in themselves. They're just different diagrams for the same database. So we can delete those and we can also delete that table. So the first thing that uh, you should do when you open this is obviously I'm assuming that you're just kind of learning the program since you're probably watching this from the blog page. So um, I'm not really like teaching huge databasing concepts, rather just how to do things. So uh, the first thing, uh, when you make your database, your collation and your character set, this is how your database will program the characters and how it compares characters to other characters. Um, the one it's on is probably fine. UTF general is pretty good. Uh, CI means case insensitive, so uh, a lowercase c and an uppercase c is considered the same thing. Alright, so now we can uh, create a new table, and we can name that table. So for example, we could have a table for users. So you can either have a user or users, depends on what you want. And then we can create a new column, we can make it user ID. And the data type, well it's a primary key, so it's a number. Uh, if you have a really big website or application, or if you need a big database, you could increase this to big int or whatever you want, but I mean int's going to work fine for me in this example. So primary key, not null, um, we can have it to where it's not signed, so it can't be negative. Auto increment, so it goes up by one each time. That's, that's pretty good for the basic primary key. That's what this little exclamation mark means. That means it's a, a primary key. What we can do now is create a new column and we can make a first name, for example, just FN for sure. For short, not sure. <laughs> and then um, varchar45 will work fine. And then we can make a last name, which will also be varchar45. And for these, they're not primary keys. We'll just make them not null. So basically you have to put a value. You can't, you can't be a blank a name. So here are our columns. We have uh, the primary key and then two other columns, which store the first name and last name. It's a very weak table, but I'm just illustrating concepts. Now, if we created another table, uh, let's say this one was for sales. We could have the uh, sale ID. This is a, this will just be like really basic. It'll be int primary key not null um, unsigned auto increment. And then we could have the person who bought it, so we could have the uh, buyer ID. And well, what I like to do is whenever I use foreign keys, I name them the same thing, just so I uh, can better understand the connection. So that, that kind of varies from person to person, but I'll just name this user ID. So that way I know it's the same ID, and this will be a foreign key referencing pointing back to the users table. So this, since it is a um, going to be a foreign key, we will also want that to be int. 
And it's also important to know that you need to have the same data type for the foreign key and the primary key. We, now down at the bottom, we can select foreign keys. We can name it user ID. And the table that it references, it, it references the users table. And the column, it specifically goes from the user ID and references the user ID. So now I have a connection between the user ID and the sales table. This is the sales table. And it's referencing the user ID in the users table, which is right here. So sales table, users table. Foreign key from user ID in the sales table to the primary key user ID in the users table. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, uh, foreign key constraints, basically, if you are to the point where you're designing what happens with foreign keys, you can update this stuff, which I'm not going to get in all that because I haven't explained it in this blog series. So, But uh, we, might, we might get into that soon. Next thing we can do, um, we can basically just review our structure. So we can X out of this. We have the users table, which has the primary key and two other columns. And then we have the sales table, which is a, uh, for, a primary key and a foreign key. All right, so obviously uh, foreign keys are not the only thing you can do. And here you can create indexes. So obviously um, when you create tables, the primary key becomes an index because that is what you use to uh, search through your data. You'll be like, find me the user who has the user ID 752. Well, having an index on that speeds that up. Uh, we also have triggers, partitioning, options, inserts, privileges. I'm not going to go into all that. I'm just trying to teach you the basics here. So the views, that will, um, we can create a new view. And that will give us, we talked about views a couple blogs ago. We can use that to create. A, like a new table you, you you have to read that blog but that's where you can do that routines basically just a process with the data and we can also do like user privileges blah 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 that's enough with that now let's get into the actual diagram so we can create a diagram and uh, we can we can name that uh, we'll just rename that to um, first diagram first. All right, and then we can open that tab. This is what the diagram uh, system looks like, just a grid. Pretty cool, I don't know. First thing you can do is you have your tools. So we have the, the mouse to drag around. This mouse, which uh, I don't even know what that's called. And then we can erase things. Um, this can place a new layer, blah, blah, blah. The most important thing here is probably the catalog tree where we can drag our tables out into our uh, database design. So um, if you ever need, you can use these other relationship things, models to change things. For example, I can create a one-to-one um, -one here, but I'm not gonna do that, so I'm going to edit undo. Well, anyways, let me explain this. This will illustrate that we have two tables, a users and a sales, and when we highlight the it goes green and it shows us the foreign keys and it says what columns reference what. So we have the column sale ID and user ID and uh, re references user ID to users user ID. So that means this user ID references this user ID. And when we do that, both of the columns that reference are highlighted. So um, another thing, if we look at the different colors, this one's the parent, this one's the child. The uh, user ID is a foreign key, so it points back to the parent. Consider this the mom, this the daughter. The uh, other thing is we have these little pigeon things. I don't even know what they're called right now. But anyways, uh, that shows us the, the um, what's the word? The cardinality, I don't know how to pronounce that, but basically it will tell us which relationship status we have. So from this, it's saying it's a one to many relationship. One user can have many sales, but a sale can only be um, owned or reference one user. And that is correct from the way we wanted our database design. So that is the basics of that. You can move these around however you like. And um, if you want to create a new table, you can do that. You can place the table right here. Double click that and we can create our columns. 
So um, we can have um, an ID here and then blah, 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 put all that stuff in. And we can reference our foreign keys, connect our tables, and so forth. But I'm just going to erase that because we don't really need that for anything. Another cool thing we can do is we can use what uh, we have the modeling templates. So these are all modeling templates. I have one right here, a timestamp. I can just delete. Oopsies, I didn't mean to do that. Edit, undo. Don't want to do that. So I just erase that. But basically, these are tables that are commonly used. For example, the user table. Um, we can drag that out or uh, double click that. Darn it, I erased it. Okay, so this will bring out a basically a custom already it's like a template so we can create a new template if we constantly reuse the same information well then we can just create a template drag that out so for example timestamp that might be a common thing you use in your database you can do that all right so I'm not gonna keep going on because I've already been talking for like 12 hours so yeah check out um, the rest of my blogs and um, if you guys like this video I may be interested in doing a uh, MySQL workbench database design series which would be awesome alright so yeah um, the other thing is some of the stuff that requires like coding um, like this here if we create a view well that's going to be extremely MySQL specific I mean you can get from general SQL to MySQL but if you're just going for database design, some of that will need to be avoided. But yeah, you get the point. All right, so everyone have a great day, and I will catch you in the next blog or video or whatever. See you around, and uh, be sure to subscribe.